Good afternoon, class. Uh, I'm just going to review a couple of problems for the test, which will be uploaded on Wednesday. Uh, the first one I'd like to do is this problem. This was on quiz eight, and um, I liked your method, but your numbers were off. Okay, so let's practice this. What if you want to flip a coin five times? How many outcomes will there be? Well, you could make a tree and there would be a ton of outcomes on it. Or you could use your handy dandy little formula and say heads plus tails five times or two to the fifth, which is 32. There are 32 outcomes. So your tree would be huge. So I suggest you do it this way, okay? On the test, I think we flipped four, and I kept getting uh, eight outcomes or two outcomes. My goodness, those are both wrong. So it's 32 outcomes, okay? Now, to do the problem concerning this, the probability of getting at most one head in five flips, well, you can do the tree, which would be really tedious, or you could just be logical. Okay, one head. So that could be head, tail, 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 tail. That's one way. Or you could have tail, head, tail, tail, tail. Or, I'm just moving the head down, tail, tail, head, tail, tail. See what I'm doing? Tail, 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 head, tail. One more. Tail, 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 head. One, two, three, four. That would be five. But I said at most one head. There's one head. You could have no heads, in which case the situation would be five tails. So there's really six outcomes for at most one head. What's the probability of having at most one head? Six out of 32. This one and these five. Okay, so anytime you're asked about that, I strongly suggest you do that formula as opposed to doing the tree. Okay. The second problem I'd like to look at is the conditional probability. We have three kinds of things. We have the probability of a jack or, that's the union symbol, or a heart. We have the probability of a jack and a heart. That's the intersection or the overlap. And we have the probability of a jack and a king. Okay? So, for this one, anytime you have that or probability, you want to expand it first. It's the probability of a jack plus the probability of a heart minus the probability of things that are jacks and hearts. Now everyone will get that part of the formula, but a lot of people will miss this just by being careless. Okay, probability of a jack is four out of 52. Probability of a heart is 13 out of 52. Minus how many cards are jacks and hearts. We're talking about the jack of hearts, and there's one jack of hearts. So that makes it 16 out of 52. On the test, I do not want decimals unless the original problem is written in a decimal. So everything should be in fraction unless the given problem is a decimal. Okay, so this one, the probability of a jack and a heart. So there is no expansion for that. And look at, guess what? There it is. You're talking about the jack of hearts, one out of 52. Okay? 
So this and is a very important thing to recognize. The third thing is a jack and a king. Well, let's also consider a jack or a king, just to be safe that we have everything. Jack and a king. Well, how many jacks are also kings? None. Empty set. Okay. Here, how many cards are jacks or kings? Well, that would be four out of 52 for the jack, plus four out of 52 for the king. Now, if we were following this expansion, how many cards are jacks and kings, none. So minus zero out of 52, and the answer would be eight out of 52, okay? Be very careful that you know the difference between or and and. That's an eight, doesn't look like it does it, it is. Next one was on quiz nine, and this one was similar to what are your five favorite bands? List your five favorite bands. Now, I got a lot of answers for that. I, I was a little confused as to where you were getting them. I got like some like five squared or things like that. But for this, this is a slot, okay? One, two, three, four, there's your five bands, okay? How can you put them in a list? Well, the first slot has five choices and then that's gone he is placed you only have four more choices so this is a four so this one is placed and this one is placed and if you're having trouble with this let's let's just look at this okay so the first one was band number three but I had five choices but I used up band number three now I'm gonna use up another one. So that is right here. Now I have one, two, three choices for the next. And can you guess, come on, two and one. So what would be the formula for this? It would be five factorial, okay? So in this one, there is no repeats no repeats because I can't say my favorite bands are uh, the temptations and the temptations right it has to be the temptations and the tops and then the supremes and so forth okay we don't repeat however sometimes we do repeat but it has to say that in the body of the question so for instance I want to pick two kings from a deck of 52 and I want to replace the card after I pick it, okay? So what are the chances of me picking the first card? Two slots, two kings, okay? Well, there are four kings, so four out of 52, no problem. I look at the card, here's my king, I put it back in the deck, and I have, again, four out of 52, because I replaced it. This is an independent situation, because I replaced it. This is a dependent situation, because I didn't replace it. This is the Motown, this is the, the temptations, and I didn't put them back in the mix so they can't be here as well, okay? Independent and dependent. That was a question on um, quiz nine. So this one, I'm sorry, let me finish it, is, um, I'm sorry, eight out of 52, okay? All right, let me erase the board and get ready for another set. Okay, in my last example, I talked about Motown, and my husband, who is my technical analyst, 
uh, said that you guys probably wouldn't know the Temptations and the Tops and the Supremes and the Chandelles and the Shangri-Las and all that. So I apologize. Put your own five top musical bands in there, okay? But you know I'm a Motown person. Okay, so the last two I want to do is doubling time and half-life, okay? The doubling time can ask a variety of questions, okay? For instance, oops, your salary is increasing by 5% a year. Okay, good to know. Your time frame is a year. That's very important, okay? If you make 25000 a year now, what will you make in seven years, okay? Well, I haven't really been given that much information. The initial amount is 25000 And I want to know how much I'll make in seven years. Okay, well, this is the formula you ultimately want to use. You know the initial, you know the two, you have to decide what variable this is. In seven years, that's the time of our experiment. So this is little t. If you call it big T, that's really, it wipes out all your points. I'm so sorry. Little big T is the amount of doubling, okay? And it comes from a percent. So we come up and we use this formula time to double. That's the only thing it gives us. If we know how much it's coming in a percent, divide that percent by into 70, okay? And that will give you 14 years. That's the only thing this formula does for you. Okay? At this point, I now know enough to fill in new is equal to the initial times 2 to the little t, which is 7, over big T, which is 14. This must, must be in parentheses. And when you do that problem, you will get 35,355 dollars and 34 cents. Okay, don't forget your dollar sign, okay? So what is the factor? It's just that much. Just the two to its powers. Okay, I'm gonna erase, do one more example and then talk about the test for a little bit. 